is sponsored by Way. Way is a hair care system that promotes healthy hair care with lots of products that are organic, shampoos, conditioners, scalp serums, and even vitamins. Recently, it's been a very big priority for me to care for my hair and my scalp. Through pregnancy and the postpartum journey, it's absolutely essential for me to restore my hair from any damage and loss that may have occurred. And that's why I love the products from Way. They have a hair care system that's curated to target thick hair, curly hair, straight hair, all hair types, and give you that luxury experience. Way's new scalp serum and thick and full supplements are a great way to promote healthy, thick, and full hair. During my wash days, I like to have a full-blown luxury pampered experience, and using this product from Way has helped my hair to feel more silky, to have a faster wash day, and throughout the week, putting the scalp serum on my hair has allowed my hair to look more shiny, frizz-free, and grow thicker. The supplements are also wonderful for those of you who struggle with thin hair, thin edges, and want to have more volume in your hair. Not only do the products work so well, but they're also so aesthetically pleasing to have out in my bathroom and in my bedroom. Gives me a really feminine feeling every time I look at them. And I want you to have the same experience, whether you're struggling with having shedding from postpartum or shedding in general, this is something that can really support your hair with that. If you're someone who wears a lot of wigs or ponytails, the scalp serum is also great for soothing any irritation that you may experience. And best of all, the products are vegan and they're safe for color treated hair. They contain ingredients such as hyaluronic acid to give your hair that silky, smooth, yet hydrated feel. So grow all the way with Whey Thick and Full Supplement and Scalp Serum. Go to T H E O U A I dot com and use the code Impression to get 15% off your entire purchase. That's 15% off your entire purchase at T-H-E-O-U-A-I.com. Use the code and use the code IMPRESSION. Thank you so much, Way, for sponsoring this video for all of these beautiful feminine women. And best of all, the products are vegan, cruelty-free, and safe for color-treated hair. Since using the serum and supplement, I have felt so much more confident with my hair, especially going through the postpartum period where shedding is expected. This has really helped to reduce it significantly. Good morning, gorgeous. How are you ladies doing this morning? I hope you're all doing fabulous. Welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Dr. Michelle Daff. And for those of you who are returning, welcome back. Thank you for being here for another video and session in Feminine Rehab. Today, we're going to talk about something that's super fun and just easy. We've been kind of hitting it hard with personality things and inner work, and I just want to do something that's very relaxed. But today, we're going to talk about something that's just fun, and that is fashion and style. Now, I've done videos in the past where we've talked about how to dress feminine, what kinds of things to wear, what colors to wear, what to kind of gravitate to and stay away from, which is all absolutely important. But today, I want to talk more about thinking about yourself, thinking about your fashion, thinking about what's in your closet, kind of having a fresh start this year to building a wardrobe that makes you happy. So... Before we get into the video, I just want to give my gratitude and say thank you so much to every single one of you ladies who's here watching my videos, supporting my content, all of those who leave comments on my Instagram page, and for those of you who support by watching my podcast, A Feminine Impression. I get a lot of questions about how you can support me on this channel, and the way you can do that is by sharing my videos sending it to your friends, posting it on your stories, and just sharing the word. So thank you for those of you who do. And for those of you who have purchased my fragrance, Fine 2911, for my brand Fine Forever. This is my debut fragrance, and it's a sexy, sensual, feminine fragrance. It lasts a long time. It's a head turner. And I just thank all of you who have purchased this fragrance. You can head over to my website, findforever.com, and purchase 2911, the fragrance. So 
All right, well, I'm excited. I want you to go ahead and just relax, get something to drink. I have some water here because I need to work on my water this year. Okay, I need to work. But you get something delicious and warm to drink. Sit back, relax, and let's talk about this. I want you to think about this. What does your style say about you? When you walk into a room, how does what you are wearing represent you? the real person on the inside. I want you to start thinking a little bit differently about your clothes in terms of what your clothes say about who you are as a person. In life, our clothing is our uniform, how we show up in the world. When you walk into a room, my dear, what does your style say about you? Does it speak before you do? I want you to know that no matter who you are, When you show up somewhere, the first thing a person does is looks at you. What you're wearing, how you're walking and talking, what you smell like, and of course, your overall aura and your presence. But your clothing will represent you before you even speak. It's your uniform for life. If you think about like a job, right? When people work at a certain place, whether it's a movie theater, you're working at a fast food restaurant, they usually want you to wear a uniform. And the reason is because they want you to know that when you step into this organization, you're not you, okay? You're not Michelle. You are an employee. And we want you to remember that by what you are wearing, right? It's not supposed to be representative of you. It's representative of the company, This same concept applies to your life. What you wear is your uniform. It's your uniform of life. And it speaks to how you feel, what you think is important, how you want your body to be perceived, and how you want to be perceived. So consider all of these things as we're speaking today and think about the woman that you are. Not the woman who you used to be, not the woman that people think you are or your family wants you to be, but the woman that you believe God created you to be. What is she like? Is she feminine? Is she daring? Is she classic and prissy? Is she more sporty and relaxed? What kind of woman are you? I want you to leave me a comment below and tell me, are you a timeless woman? Are you sophisticated? Are you very trendy? Leave me a comment below and share what you're striving to be. Even if you're not that woman yet, it's who you're supposed to be. And you're always going to get pulled towards that woman, whether or not you're living that life. Even if you don't feel like you're her yet, that's who's inside of you. That's the woman that you are supposed to be. And you can start building towards that. The reason why I'm addressing this topic today is because your clothing and your clothing choices are so important in terms of opening doors for you. As I said earlier, people are going to judge you based on what you present like. That's going to be your initial opening before you open your mouth. So this is something I want you to really think about. And it makes our lives so much easier when we can kind of curate our closet and pick our clothes out very easily. It saves so much stress and so much of your brain power when you're able to wake up in the morning, put something on, figure it out very quickly because everything goes together. All of your options are things that you actually like and look good in. And shopping is easy for you because you know what works and what doesn't work. I promise not only will it lift your spirits, but it'll help you to show up for yourself when you have an idea of who you are and your clothes and fashion represents that. The very first thing we're going to do is declutter that wardrobe, girl. It is time. We are at the beginning of the year. Open up your closet, slide it open, pop it open, whatever kind of closet you have, and start decluttering. I know this is a tough thing for a lot of people to do. The idea of getting rid of clothes is heartbreaking sometimes because we're so attached to things that are material. But that's not how it should ever be. And I don't want you to watch this video and throw everything away and then just start splurging on clothes. That's not the point of this video. And take your time to work through your closet, really figure out the answer to these questions, and then start purchasing new things. 
Okay. Don't feel like this is not possible because you don't have the money and you don't have the creativity. Nothing has to be done right now. This is time to reflect, to think, and to start getting to work. So I encourage you to go through your wardrobe and start getting to work. Start looking at all of your items of clothing and making decisions about whether or not you are going to keep them or you are going to give them away or sell them. These are going to be the garments that do not fit you. Either they are too tight and we know that that is not a very feminine or elegant thing to do is walk around with clothes that's like squeezing your body and everything is kind of hanging around and we don't want to do that. Things that fit you well are things that you can move in, you're comfortable in, and you feel good about yourself in. So we're looking at things that do or do not fit. The fabric, if clothes are very itchy on you and you're just not comfortable when you wear it, maybe they have sequins and they're falling all over the place or glitter that's like getting all over your face, things like that we're going to get rid of. Clothes that are ripping, too faded. Or maybe they're just completely out of fashion. They were super trendy at a time and now you don't feel comfortable in them because they don't go with the fashion. My rule of thumb as I'm declaring is, would I purchase this again? I pretty much shop my closet. I take a look at the outfit and I say, if I had this in the store, right? I take a look at the outfit and I say, hmm, if this particular outfit were in the store and I was walking by it right now, would I purchase it again? If the answer is no, it is a go. Like, it's going away. (laughs) We're getting rid of it, okay? I will shop my closet. It's a great way to know whether or not you really like something. You can also take your time and maybe pick one hour every Saturday and try on your clothes. Try on every single thing in your closet because sometimes you'll see something and you'll think, oh, this is really cute, but you haven't worn it in eight months. You don't even know what it looks like anymore on you. Maybe you look different eight months ago. So trying it on is going to really inform you as to whether or not it should stay or it should go. And babe, I know that getting rid of clothes can be very challenging depending on what those items mean to you. I was surprised at how hard of a time I was having deciding whether or not I was going to keep certain things. You might have some clothes that you're connected to because you've had it since you were a little girl or it was like a sweater that you wore when you were in high school, but you're never going to wear it again. You don't even like looking at it. It needs to go. This can sometimes be a deeper issue. Like maybe when you grew up, you didn't have a lot. You didn't have a lot of clothes or you were always getting all the hand-me-downs. So everything that you got, you wanted to just hold on to. And you don't like the idea of getting rid of something that was hard to come by at some point. So some of it is going to be just psychological based on how you grew up. Or maybe you had parents who were hoarders and they never got rid of anything. This is something that you're going to have to overcome because keeping all of these things really does weigh down your life. Even if you don't realize it, you are storing the thought of all of these things in your mind somewhere. And when you release it, it takes something off of you. It takes something off of you where you feel more light and more free. So as you're going through your closet, you might realize that you don't want to throw things away because you spent a lot of money on it. I know recently I was going through my closet. I was having a really hard time, harder than I expected to have getting rid of things. And some of it was because I had just purchased it. But when I purchased it and I wore it once, it was just, uh, it was just okay, but I don't like it. And every time I see that particular item, I'm like, why didn't I buy this? And even though I've only had it for a month, I went ahead and donated it. It's not everything that you have to keep for at least five years before you say, okay, I'm going to donate it. Even if you bought it last week, if it brings you any sort of feeling that's not joy, then it shouldn't be with you. You also have some clothing that maybe have memories attached to it. Maybe you wore this to prom or you wore this when you got engaged and you don't ever want to get rid of it, even though it doesn't match your color palette, it doesn't fit. It's one of those things you're always pulling down when you wear it because it's rising up. These are things that you have to donate and remember that your life is not attached to items. You store the only thing that really lasts are the memories and you keep those memories in your heart, 
in your mind, and sometimes they're even in pictures. You do not have to have the item hanging up in your closet. And you know what? Sometimes those memories are bad memories. I know I have this wrap that I wear around the house when I don't really want to have a lot of clothes on. I got it in Bora Bora. It was an amazing adventure. I had such a great time there and it was the only thing that I have from there. So I did not want to throw it away. But I also wore it when I was really, really sick this year. I had a kidney stone. It was the most awful experience. And because I didn't have the strength to put on regular clothes, I would just wear this wrap. So now when I look at it, I don't remember Bora Bora and a beautiful, fabulous vacation. I remember being sick and that is not a good memory to me. So I went ahead and got rid of it. There are things that are going to bring all... So as you are decluttering, keep all of these things in mind. The more you let go of, the more room you have to receive. And as you're stepping into this new year, you're stepping into this new identity as a feminine woman, or you're cultivating it, it is time for a new start. You are saying goodbye to the old, and you're saying welcome to the new. Once you have completely decluttered your closet and you have the items that you want to keep, I would suggest that you take some time and color code your closet. This makes getting ready so much easier. It makes pairing outfits together so much simpler. And it's important to kind of conserve all of your brain energy at the beginning of the day by making your morning routine as fluid and as smooth as possible. So just go from light to dark or, you know, whatever colors you wear more often. How you color code it doesn't matter. Just keep the light colors together. I also like using one color for all of my hangers because it just makes the closet look more beautiful, more aesthetically pleasing. And I just like the uniformity in the way the clothes look when everything is the same color. Now, in terms of having a color palette, this is one of the funnest parts of having your own personal style and just finding what works for you. I would suggest that you curate a color palette that looks good on you. These are going to be the colors that you like wearing the most, that look the best on you, that you feel the most confident in, and allow them to flow. So make sure that whatever, maybe four colors you're choosing, they work together. This is something that you can do by going on Pinterest and just typing in color palettes, neutral tones, blush tones, pink tones, gray tones, and figuring out which colors look good on you and good together. This is going to make your shopping life so much easier. And again, getting ready is going to be a breeze. So for me personally, I like the neutral colors, but I do also like pops of colors in between. So typically my color palette will be white, black, beige, cream, neutral. I really like taupes and mauves. And I'll sprinkle in some colors during other seasons. So for example, you could have like a fall winter color palette and a summer spring color palette. In the summers, I love to wear pastels. So I'll wear things like pink, like a bubblegum pink, baby blue. I'll wear certain shades of like mints. And it's beautiful because it meshes really well with the neutral. Same thing goes for the winter time. I'll throw in pops of burgundy and emeralds and gold. And that meshes really well with the neutrals. So the neutrals are kind of just like all year round. So my neutrals are all year round, but I'm not wearing colors typically like yellow and orange and like a normal green color or bronze. I'm very careful about the colors that I wear. Not to say those colors don't look good because those bright neon colors usually do look really nice on dark skin. But that's not me. That's not what I like to wear. I don't like the attention that it gives me. I don't like the fact that I can barely wear it because it doesn't go with anything else in my closet. And so with those things, as I was decluttering, I was getting rid of. I know some people will tell you to choose like a fashion icon and start looking at what they're wearing and kind of build from there. Personally, that's never worked for me. 
There is not one celebrity that I can look at and say, I love the way this person dresses. I want to be like them. But I have seen so many like influencers and bloggers that wear things that I say, this is exactly my style. Like I would love to be able to emulate this. And what I also like about finding these bloggers and these YouTube creators is that they can tell you where they got it from. So when you start to find certain stores that carry the clothes that you like, you can have places where you shop and they're your go-to place. You're not always lost trying to find clothes. So these things just make your life a lot easier. When you're putting your color palette together, also consider things like your skin tone. Okay, these are things that a lot of people overlook until it's time to start shopping and they're like, wait, these colors don't look good on me. Anything can truly look good on you, but some things will look better. So consider your skin tone and which colors you think in your skin tone you want to bring out. Or maybe you don't want to bring out anything in your skin tone. You want your clothes to really shine. And that's also something to consider. And I also want you to truly consider things like your hairstyle, your makeup. Okay, all of these things are going to affect your personal style. Certain people have certain hairstyles that match with their color palette. So if they like more camel, bronze, browns, and their hair has like blonde streaks and it's brown in the front, it all meshes together and it looks really good. And you might think, wow, they look so much better in this than I do. Well, it's because their hair matches their clothes. (laughs) And so everything kind of goes together. But that also comes into play when we think of like hairstyles. If you see a woman in a beautiful peacoat and a scarf and gorgeous earrings and she just looks so put together, consider the fact that she has her hair in a bun and her sleek bun is what's showing her clothes off. Okay, all of these things do need to be considered as you are curating your style because it's going to impact the way that you end up looking when it's all said and done. As you're curating your wardrobe, I also want you to pay special attention to what I call the dependables. These are going to be your outfits that you know you can rely on. They look good every single time. And you can have certain things for special events or things where you know you absolutely want to come looking top dollar, (laughs) looking your best. So I would suggest having a dependable date night dress. So you don't have to go through the stress and all of the mental agony that we sometimes put ourselves through when we have a first date and we want to really bring it. I would also recommend this for a special occasion, like a wedding or just a formal event where you want to look dressed up, classy, put together, and you have everything that works. Make sure that you have at least two outfits, at least one dress at least one of them should be addressed that are your dependables. And if you don't have that yet, then create one. Go on Pinterest and start looking at very nice date night dresses or wedding gowns and or wedding attire and find something that you can depend on. This is great because you can also continue to buy more clothes that look just like it in different colors and just with a little variation. And that can end up becoming your style. Who says you can't look fabulous every single day? You absolutely can. There are no rules. Don't let anyone put you in a box. Just always remember that being a woman is fun. And being a feminine woman is even more fun. We have so many things that we can create when we curate our wardrobes that can just bring our personality and bring color into our lives. So I want you to make sure... I do not want to overwhelm you because I know that a lot of this can feel overwhelming sometimes. So we're not going to go into all the categories of things that you should have. But for those of you who want to get ahead of the game and just kind of want to know what should be in your wardrobe to piece things together and start styling yourself, then I would say to make sure that you have feminine blouses, dresses, skirts, shoes, like everyday flats, everyday sneakers that are very feminine, heels, boots, having outerwear such as blazers and peacoats, 
at least a couple, at least two pairs of jeans that you can depend on, something like high waisted or boot cut in washes that are light or white. Having some dainty jewelry, it can just be one thing. You don't have to have a lot of jewelry, but things that look good with your skin. But having jewelry that works with your aesthetic, that has the same color hardware as your aesthetic, whether that's like silver or gold, having a reliable pair of sunglasses, a handbag that works with everything, and of course, a feminine and reliable fragrance. Remember, my love, that your style is yours. It belongs to you. So make sure that as you're going through this process, you're having fun and allowing yourself to bring out the creativity, the feminine nature, and the love that you have for yourself in how you show up in this world. And also remember that you don't have to have much. You can build a capsule wardrobe of maybe just seven outfits and work with that and slowly build up your wardrobe. No one says you have to have a lot to look good. Most of what people have, they do not wear. So wear things that only make you feel great. And remember that this is not something I want you to spend all of your money on and all of your time on. Although your fashion and your clothes are important, they are not the most important thing. The most important thing is that you are a beautiful woman on the inside. And being a feminine woman who is a daughter and child of God, all of your needs will be provided for. If you don't have the money at this time to start purchasing items to build up your wardrobe, remember, it will come. Just be ready when it comes to be able to know what you want. And as it says in Matthew chapter 6, after all, life is more than just clothes. And your heavenly father will provide every single thing that you need to you. As he tells you in Matthew chapter 6, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, and what you will wear. Because your father, Jesus, literally told us, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than food, the body, and clothes? Look at the birds. They don't sow or reap or store anything away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? And why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the fields grow? They don't spin or labor. If that is how God clothes the grass on the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown in the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry. And that's what I want to impart to you, my love. Do not worry. If God will dress up the flowers and dress up the birds and all the things that he created, he will most certainly take care of his baby girl because you are his most prized possession. So as long as you... Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All of these things shall be added on to you. I thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for being here with me. Leave me a comment and let me know how your decluttering is going, what your color palette is, what kind of feminine woman you want to be. I want to know. Thank you for all of your beautiful comments on my channel, everything that you pour into me. I am so grateful for all the ways that you are developing and changing and growing every single day. I am so proud of you for the ways in which you are developing and changing and growing every single day. I thank you. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram page at a feminine impression and my personal page at Dr. Michelle Dav. And make sure to listen to my podcast, A Feminine Impression, for more feminine content. And before you head out, be sure to visit my website, findforever.com, and purchase my fragrance, 2911. Until next time, my loves, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Big kisses. Bye-bye.